Hello, it's Miss Schuller. Hola, como estas? I am going to read the final chapters of Ada Twist from the Perilous Pants with the questionnaires. Here is the first, play, first page. What is an eddy? Oh my god, isn't that just a good idea? So an eddy current, a loop of airflow. Air flows in loops or circles in one place around and around. Oh, like Chuck Caddy, like my granddaddy's name. Okay. The dark clouds were looming closer and Ada could see the far off trees swaying in the wind. A storm was coming. Soon that wind would reach the factory and when it did, everything would change. The eddy that now trapped Uncle Ned would collapse and he would be set loose from its grasp. Then who knows where he might fly. Hurry, Arthur, said Ada. We're running out of time. I hope that he gets out. Here we go. Oh, I'm so scared. Arthur grabbed the tennis ball. Thunk! The ball lobbed into the air and soared gently over Uncle Ned and right past him. It dropped to the ground with a gentle thud. Too hard, Arthur said and adjusted his grip. He tried again. Thunk! This time the ball ar uh, arched high into the air until Ned reached out and grabbed it. The crowd cheered. Uncle Ned took off his helmet and put the tennis ball inside. Keep going, said Ada. Thunk! 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 Arthur hit ball after ball into the air. One after another, they flew close enough for Ed to catch and put in his ailment. As Ada had hoped, Uncle Ned dropped a tiny bit lower in the air. The plan was working. The crowd went wild. Yay, they cheered. Arthur, Arthur. <gasps> yeah, what a good brother. Like his favorite tennis player on the center court at Wendeldum, Arthur Twist took a deep breath and focused. Thock, thock, thock. Arthur hit the tennis balls perfectly. Uncle Ned missed a ball, but he caught the next two. As he added each ball to the helmet, he dropped a little lower. He hovered a few centimeters out of Bo's reach. Bo stretched as far as long as his arms could go. I can almost reach you, yelled Bo. Hurry, Arthur. The storm clouds are coming. Indeed, the, star the dark clouds moved closer and closer still. Thunk! One more, yelled Ada. Thunk! With perfect precision. 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 Arthur lobbed the ball high into the air. The ball soared up, up, up into Arthur, I mean into Uncle Ned's outstretched hand. Uncle Ned grabbed it. He plopped into the pile of tennis balls in the helmet. Uncle Ned dipped to, toward the ladder as Bo reached and reached and reached. <gasps> oh, the anticipation. Look at this. Chapter 16. Hot, 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 hot. Hot asphalt goes up, hot ground, heat rises up, so the heat will rise. Just then, a large dragonfly zipped past Uncle Ned's head. One purple mark despised the dragonfly and zoomed after it. Swoosh! The bird swooped past Uncle Ned's right ear. Swoosh! You guys, I did not show you the picture before. I am so sorry. Look at Bo reaching up into the to get the rope. The other purple mart zoomed past Uncle Ned's ear. They fluttered and tumbled through the air like acrobats. Just as Bo's fingertips touched the tip of Uncle Ned's shoe, the dragonfly landed on Uncle Ned's nose. Help! cried Uncle Ned, dropping the helmet and slapping at his face. The helmet crashed to the ground. The green balls hit the steamy hot asphalt and bounced in every direction. Boing, boing, boing. The lemurs, monkeys, and ostriches chased the balls right into the crowd. People shrieked and eat. It was chaos. Ada, Iggy, and Rosie watched in horror as Uncle Ned popped higher into the air out of the bow's reach. Help! He yelled. Do something! The tennis balls bounced like gas molecules spreading out in every direction, just like the molecules that spread out from Arthur's hot, stinky shoe. Ada remembered her experiment and what? Look at the picture. Hey, take a picture, 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 picture. Oh, that's a good picture. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. What she learned, what she had learned, 
The hot shoe was stinkier than the cold one. At least the stink of it had reached Ada faster than the stink of the cold shoe. That meant that the hot air molecules spread faster than the cold air molecules. Ada quickly flipped open her notes. There was the answer to the problem. Ada looked at the hot black asphalt down below Uncle Ned. The surface sizzled and heated the stink above it, which rose in gentle waves. Stinky, nose-burning asphalt reeking waves. And this, and that is when Ada Twist knew exactly what to do. There was no time to lose. <sighs> the ex oh my god, the excitement. I hope it works out. Look at them. Look at the little look at the questionnaires. I hope it works out for the questionnaires. And here we go. Oh my god, what do you think she's gonna do? So this says water, cool the ground, hot ground. Water will cool the ground and stop heat rising. Is that gonna work out? Let's see. Chapter 17. Quick, shouted Ada, grab the hose. Ada and Iggy ran to the fire hose, which is laying on the hot pavement next to the truck. No, said Rosie, remember what will happen. You'll knock Uncle Ned out of the eddy and he'll fly off into, the, into that wind. No, he won't, said Ada, trust me. She grabbed the end of the fire hose. Iggy grabbed the hose behind her. Rosie looked doubtful but jumped in line behind Iggy. Hit it, B, yelled Ada. B flipped the switch on the, on the pumper truck, and a heavy spray of water burst out of the hose. It was, the most, it was more powerful than Ada had imagined. The three friends struggled to control the hose, but they held tight. Get ready, Bo, Ada yelled, and she pointed the hose at the asphalt just below Uncle Ned. The water splashed over the hot surface, and instantly Uncle Ned pledged downward. It wasn't much, but it was just enough. Bo reached out and he grabbed him by his foot. By the foot, B flipped off the water and the hose flopped to the ground. Uncle Fred scrambled up the ladder and grabbed the rope, dangling from Uncle Ned's waist. We got him, yelled Uncle Fred. The crowd cheered again. How'd you do that, asked Uncle Ned. I remember that hot air takes up more room than cold air, so we cooled down the asphalt with water. That cooled the air just above it and that made you drop enough to grab your foot. Really? Well done, said Uncle Ned. Now I can get out of these pans. But there was no time. Just then a strong gust of wind blasted into the courtyard and blew the dust and leaves up and, and away. The whirlwind was gone. A heavy raindrop splattered the asphalt, then another and another. Raindrops began to fall faster and faster and, cr and the crowd scattered. Uncle Fred tied Uncle Ned's rope to the bumper of the zoo bus and rounded up to the and brought it up the animals. The questionnaires and Ada's mom and brother hopped into the bus. In a few moments, Uncle Fred stopped at the Twist house on the milk lane. Thank you for rescuing me, said Uncle Ned. If it weren't for you, I'd be eaten by birds and halfway to Timbuktu by now. You're welcome, said Ada, as she waved goodbye to Uncle Ned, Uncle Fred, Iggy, and Rosie. Uncle Fred humped and headed down the street with Uncle Ned floating above the zoo bus. Arthur ran up the steps to the front door of the Twist house. Ada and Mrs. Twist followed him as thunder rumbled in the distance. Thanks for letting me use your racket, said Ada. You could be a tennis champion someday like Arthur Ashe. Maybe, said Arthur, but you should stick with science. Arthur opened the front door, stepped into the house. He paused and smiled at Ada. Actually, he said, let me know if you want to be a tennis, if you want to play tennis sometime. You weren't that bad, but you have to use your own racket and stay out of my stuff. Arthur tried to look mad, but it didn't work. Ada grinned at her brother as she shut the door, leaving Ada and her mom alone on the porch. Just then, the sky opened and the rain poured. Buckets onto the roof of the porch and splashed into puddles in the yard. The smell of the rain hit Ada's nose and she closed her eyes for a moment and breathed it in. It was not the kind of smell that curled her toes. It was a warm and cozy smell that mixed with her mom's perfume and was one of the best things in the world. Ada and her mom sat watched the rain plopped and she splopped and splashed on the grass. Her mother put her arm around Ada and gave her a hug. Ada, she said, I'm sorry, I don't listen to you when you try to tell me about Uncle Ned. I just didn't get it. Ada smiled at her mom. I know, said Ada. You know, I'm very proud of you, said Mrs. Twist, and I 
I know said Aiden. How do you know what I'm going to tell you, asked Mrs. Swiss, because you already did, said Aiden. Things moms tell you. The bathroom is not a science lab. The pantry is not an ant farm. Don't put my toothbrush in the earthworm box. Don't take Arthur's names. And I love you. Oh, that is the cutest. That is the cutest. Okay, let's go back to the other page because I have to show you this. Look at that illustration. Are you serious? So look at this illustration. We'll go back to this later, but I'm going to talk to you about an illustration and how it works in art. That is a gorgeous illustration. Okay. And a smile. See, she said, I always write down the important things so I remember, but I have a question. Just one said Mrs. Stewart. Well, said Ada, do big raindrops taste different than little ones? She asked. And why does a rain... Rain gray in the air, but clear of my hand. Why do earthworms crawl on the sidewalk in the rain? What if? And that's the end. So we use another page called Citizen Science. And if you look here, it's the bird count. That's how many birds she saw. So she saw a magpie, a crow, a starling, a woodpecker, a purple finch, a blue jay, a black caped chickadee, a wren, and a pigeon there. Citizen Science. When Ada Twist performed her stink experiment, she tried to gather as much information as she could. Gathering data is how scientists test their hypotheses and learn more about the subjects they study. Sometimes scientists need help gathering data. That's when they call on, sci on citizen, uh, citizen scientists. Each citizen scientists are people who like who, who people like you who help in scientific research. Citizen scientists gather data about animals, climate, aging, body, and many other topics. The Great Backyard Bird Count is one example of citizen science at work. Each February, more than 100,000 people of all ages from around the world join in. They count and identify the birds near them and share the data they collect. The Great Backyard, Backyard Bird Count gives scientists a snapshot of the world's bird populations. Scientists use the data to learn more about weather and climate change, bird diseases, and migration. You can learn how to join in at gbbcbirdcount.org. I like these little kids' books. I will read more later. I think that's it, though. Let's do gas real quick. Okay, gas. Oh, to gas. What is gas? It's mostly just space with a few molecules bouncing all over the place. They bounce faster and farther when the temperature is hot. They slow and condense when the temperature is not. Compared to a solid, there's nothing much to it. So most of the time, we can see right through it. Some gases fill caverns deep underground. Some gases fill the sky. Some gases fill your tummy. And no matter how you try, they sneak out and make a sound. It's very embarrassing, but at last, it's being a part of being human. And yeah, this too shall pass. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my God, me and Andrea Baby think alike. So anyway, my name is Miss Shante Schuler from Shakati Ed, and thank you guys so much for listening. I hope that you guys enjoy the book, Ada Twist and the Perilous Pants, and you can pause the video and mark it as you go along. It's just really good to read. Have a great day.